come on in. I've been looking for you. Every little while, I go to the window to see if you're on your way. Welcome. There's lots of room for you. I always have room at my table for all of my friends. Come on in. The coffee's hot. The cookies are fresh. And the word of God is fresh too. Welcome. I've been thinking many times about Peter. I can relate to Peter in many ways. But remember that Peter also wrote two books of the Bible, First and Second Peter, and there's some good stuff in there. Some really good stuff. But in this occasion, I want to talk about from Matthew chapter 14 and verse 24. Rather, verse, we're going to start with 22, and I will not read all of them. 22 to 34 is when there was a storm on the Sea of Galilee. Galilee was not an actual sea, but it was like a sea because it was huge, and a storm could come up at any time. Just like Lake Superior in Minnesota, very similar. A storm could come up at any time and make, and uh, many years ago, there was a pastor in Duluth, Minnesota. He lived right next to Lake Superior. And Wednesday night came and Pastor Erickson didn't show up. And they thought, where is he? Well, some of his elders went to the shore of Lake Superior and there he was trying to get his boat in because a storm had come up in Lake Superior. Well, this happened to the disciples. Jesus had sent them across the Sea of Galilee and he went to pray. The Bible says that he went alone to pray. And I'm thinking that when he went alone to pray, the Father prepared him for the storm. That's the secret. Spend time with the Lord. Don't let the storm catch you unprepared. But the Bible says that they were in the boat. In another translation, it actually said ship. I have a hard time thinking of being a ship. But the boat was big enough for all the disciples plus Jesus. So it was pretty good size. So they were in this boat and pretty soon the storm came. And the Bible says the waves started buffeting them and the wind was against them and they got terrified. These, some of these disciples were professional fishermen and they got scared mm -hmm. in a storm. And they got frightened, the Bible says. Then they looked out on the sea and they saw something white walking toward them. And they were afraid. They thought it was a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. So then Peter, he sometimes did things without thinking. He said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. I don't know why Peter had this idea. I have no idea. <laughs> if it were me, I think I would have stood on the corner of the boat and jumped in the water and swim. The backstroke. Yeah, all the way to Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But oh no, Peter stepped out and tried to walk on the water. But you know what? I was thinking about Peter and I have to hand it to him. The other disciples stayed in the boat they didn't try to do anything different. They stayed in the security of the boat, but Peter got out and he tried to walk on the water and he was doing pretty well. But then he decided, what am I doing? 
I'm actually walking on the water here. And he started looking at the waves and he started feeling the wind and he began to sink. But Peter knew what to do and he didn't call on the disciples. He didn't say, hey boys, I need a rope. Come on, John, I need help. No, he called on Jesus and he said, Jesus, save me. Mm -hmm. Jesus, help me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And then he said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? This was a test for Peter. It wasn't a test for the disciples who stayed in the boat. It was a test for Peter. And for a while, Peter was doing pretty well. And then he began to sink. And the reason, he started looking around at the circumstances. He took his eyes off of Jesus and put him on the waves. And he began to sink. But I'm thinking, where do you go when you start to sink? Where do you go when you need help? Do you call 911? Or do you call the fire department? Do you call the sheriff? Do you call your congressman? Where do you go? Jesus was the, I think he was the ideal first responder. He went to Jesus, help me. Mm -hmm. And Jesus didn't say, Peter, Peter, why did you even try? Why don't you just swim back to the boat now? No, Jesus and Peter obviously walked back to that boat and got in. It was a test for Peter. And he said, Peter, why did you doubt? Why, why didn't you have more faith? So what I'm telling you tonight is if God has called you to do something and you've started out in faith, keep the faith one step at a time. Don't look at circumstances, focus on Jesus. Don't look around at the others that can stay in the boat. You go, you follow Jesus. This is a test and he's going to see that you make it. Even if he, he walked a little way, he didn't walk all the way, but he walked a little way. So I, I don't know if the disciples gave him a high five, I doubt it. But the Bible says that when they got back into the boat, they worshiped Jesus. And I, think to myself, they said, truly, this is the Son of God. You are the Son of God. That was their reaction. And this will be the reaction if you step out of the boat and you might fall, but get up again. My husband told me that when he was a young man in college, he visited an older man quite elderly, and he said, do you have some advice for a young man just starting out? He said, if you fall, get up. Don't stay in the water, yeah. Peter, Peter. Don't stay in the water. Don't start swimming away from the boat. Get back in the boat. Get back. And this is another thing I thought of. He had to get back in the boat. Jesus and Peter went back in the boat. You need those around you. You can't make it on your own. You need to have others around you. And when they're around you, you can worship God. So I'm telling you this afternoon, if you never called on Jesus to save your soul, don't wait, do it. He's the only one who can do it. There is no other way. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Call unto him, and then if you need help, say, Jesus, help me. And 
he will because he loves you and he wants you to make it. If you've fallen, God can still use you. Get up, call on Jesus, take his hand, walk with him back into fellowship, back into fellowship with the disciples, back into fellowship with your church. Don't try to make it on your own. It's much, much better with other people. What do you say? Let's be like Peter. Let's call on Jesus. Jesus, help me.